Hey everybody, welcome back to Magic Orthodoxy. My name is David and this is a Magic Review. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for being here. Welcome one and all who enjoy magic, magic reviews. Today, we're gonna do a deep dive into the Brainwave deck, that's right. But this is a marketed effect. We're gonna look at the BAMO Brainwave, Brain Waves Brainwave deck by Bob Farmer. This is available as a PDF at library.com. Um, what is the Brainwave deck? If you don't know, if you don't know what the Brainwave deck is, uh, it is a gimmicked deck most commonly attributed to Die Vernon. That's right, most commonly attributed to Die Vernon. Uh, the way the trick goes is your cards are pocketed, right? They're still in the tuck box and you have the spectator call out any card. Any card they want, no force, right? They say six of diamonds. You're like, oh, that's interesting. Because before uh, we got together, before I saw you, this morning, I arranged my deck in a particular way. And you pull out your cards, and they see a blue box with blue backs, and you're going through them, and one card is reversed. It's the Six of Diamonds that they called out earlier. Incredible! You just did a reverse card trick, right? But the plot thickens. There's a kicker. That's right, there's a kicker. The card slides out, you turn it over, and it has a red back. A red back. That's pretty cool. Now you might say, well, what's the difference between that and the invisible deck? Well, the invisible deck, when you bring it out, uh, it's all face up, right? You bring out a deck of face up cards and the one card that's reversed is a back. You see a back just sitting there. And as you slide that back out and rotate it, it's the named card. In the brainwave, you bring it out, backs out, okay? And the reverse card is face up. So kind of the way we, usually see cards come out of a tuck. More natural that you see backs and that you spread through the deck uh, using the backs. And then the striking thing about Brainwave is of course the different color, right? And so the, the two camps go back and forth between uh, what they like better. I think invisible deck is probably more common and uh, more popular only because with the invisible deck, you can see the faces, right? You can see all the faces. And so if you're, if you're doing uh, the trick and you're kind of looking for your card, <laughs> having the faces is a little easier. With the brainwave, you're just looking at backs. So at that point, you're, you're doing a little bit of uh, work in your head as well. All right, so here's what Bob Farmer did. And this is how his brainwave is a little different, okay? Um, his ad copy boasts that you can predict the ending in writing before the card is revealed. So you have one prediction in view, there's no switches, there's no indexes. You can also show a regular top and a regular bottom on your deck before the card is located. You'll also be able to have a card selected, have it vanish from one deck and appear in another. And I really can't go into the particulars, right, of how the deck is different. If I did that, then that would give away the <laughs> how this deck works. But I did say it was a download, right? This is a PDF download, 57 pages at library.com. And you're going to get the instructions, right? The instructions are going to tell you how to build this. Now, you will need more than what you would need if you were building a standard brainwave. Obviously, with a standard brainwave, you're going to need a deck of red and a deck of blue, right? With this deck, you're gonna need that, plus you're gonna need your, your roughing material. You're also gonna need pens of red and blue because you're gonna mark the backs. And you're also gonna need another instrument that allows you to cut cards, a particular device that's sold that uh, card gaff makers use that cut the cards in a specific way. And you'll need that tool to make this because the way Bob Farmer has the cards split apart, trying to be as vague as possible, is not the standard way. In fact, as a left-handed person, it's, it's kind of nice. It doesn't, re doesn't rely on the, the pressure that we normally uh, put on it. And I would be curious to ask Bob Farmer if he would cut his deck differently if it was a left-handed person as to a right-handed person. Maybe think about that before you 
whip out your cutting tool and start hacking away at your deck. Maybe think about left and right. Um, his deck is in a particular order. I will say that too. So it not as random as uh, some other brainwave decks. This is in a particular order when it comes out. The other thing Bob recommends is getting a leather card case. Now the leather card case enables you to bring the deck out without tipping off the fact that maybe the cards aren't the same color, right? That's the thing with the brainwave deck is sometimes you pull the cards out and you know you just pulled red cards out of a blue box. So that looks weird. So he says if you get a leather card case, then you know you won't have that problem. Let's talk about what you learned in the PDF. He's gonna talk about how you make the deck, of course, and then he'll talk about how it works. And he'll run through one basic presentation. The first trick is called a third eye brainwave, and it's sort of an any card at any number effect that you do with dice. The second trick is called Deck of Destiny. It's a two deck trick, one a mark deck and the other the BAMO brainwave. He'll also teach you how to do a color force should you want to leave the deck on the table. So you've left the deck on the table, there's already a color side up. He shows you how to force that color. Then there's Transpo Wave. The card vanishes from one deck and appears face up in another. And then there's Paul Rossini's Brainwave. He'll talk about Brainwave origins, where the deck came from. There's some appendices and notes at the end of this. Pocket Space is just the deck, right? There's nothing else there. Um, angles wise, it's the same angles as the brainwave. However, I did mention that he has devised a way for you to show the bottom of the deck, which you can't do with a regular brainwave, okay? You can't flash the bottom, okay? But with, with Bob's, you can. You can flash the bottom and it doesn't disrupt the top, which is pretty cool. It's a really cool system. Um, Inspectability, of course you can't because, you know, it's a fully gimmick deck. Uh, slice and difficulty, probably the same as a standard brainwave, even though you're not splitting the cards the same way. Um, I don't think the learning curve is that different. It's still gonna feel like a brainwave. I think if you're already familiar with brainwave and you like brainwave, I think this kicks it up a notch. I think it kicks it up a notch, adds some, it adds some bionic arms, that was a Steve Austin joke, uh, to the deck. Um, what else did I say about this that I thought was unique besides just the, the, bottom, the bottom card? Oh, I know. The other thing that he came up with is a way for you to predict the color before the spectator names their card. That's pretty cool. So, and I can't tell you what it is because if I tell you what it is, then you'll, then you'll know. <laughs> you'll understand. But uh, he has some pattern that he gives you and he, you're able to say something about the color of the deck or of the spectator's card before they mention their card, which is pretty cool. Because it's because of the way he's built this deck. Because of the way he's built, you couldn't do this with the standard brainwave, okay? Because of the way he's built this deck, he's devised some pattern that enables you to kind of predict what will happen before it happens, which is kind of cool. Set up and reset, uh, the deck takes a little bit of building. It does, um, because like I said, there's more going on than just the, the standard. Uh, one way to probably do it, if you were gonna do it a little easier, is you could, I guess, get a brainwave deck and then take it all apart and then put it back together. That way you don't have to do the rough and smooth part, but you're still gonna need some other cards. He has other cards in this deck. It is actually a little thicker than a standard deck, which would be another reason why you'd get the card case. There's more cards. <laughs> there's more cards than just the 52. There's no jokers, but there's more cards. And like I said, you're gonna need the markers as well because he's marked specific cards in such a way so that you know orientation when you pull the deck out of the box. Um, positives, is a lot of fun to read. It's a lot of fun to read. And it was certainly uh, creative. And I always like it when somebody can take a classic and then kind of kick it up a notch. That's a lot of fun. Uh, negatives, I think the negatives for me is still, as a left-handed person, <laughs> um, I just have trouble with uh, rough and smooth. I have trouble splitting them apart. And I think even the way this is cut, I don't think it worked for a left-handed person as well. I, that's why I would ask Bob if he would cut it differently for a left-handed person. That's, that's, what, I would, that's what I would be curious about. But um, the way he, but the way the cards split apart though, was 
a lot of fun. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I would almost wonder if you could take that. I would take that same approach to, uh, I, you know what, I, I would. Uh, I would take his idea and throw it over to, like I would mod my invisible deck. I would. I would just go grab my invisible deck and mod it in the same way that he mods this, just so that the, the cards split apart a little easier. I think that's, it was a, it was a really cool idea. $25, 25 bucks at library.com. You want to look for Bamo Brainwave, Brainwaves by Bob Farmer. Thanks to Bob Farmer for allowing me to have this so I could do the review for you. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.